welcome to another Thursday night live stream with your host, JC. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to another uh, Thursday night live stream. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but I've had so much stuff pile up in pre-orders that I've not yet gotten a chance to open. And so I thought, why not open it on camera? So that's pretty much going to be the focus for uh, tonight's live stream is just me opening up a bunch of stuff. But let me uh, first uh, find my cursor. There we go. My mouse is not working. All right, there we go. Let's see who's in the house. We've got Gnarly Charlie in the house. What's up? Adam is in the house. Rashid is in the house. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you all. Now, I'm probably going to keep this uh, stream fairly short. I actually kind of screwed up my elbow. I got to go see the doctor next week to see what's going on with it, but it kind of hurts to bend, so I'm not sure how much stamina I have uh, left today, but... um. Let's just kind of delve into it. So let me uh, pull up here. So I've this is my most recent arrival for pre-orders. It is the new Secret Empire Captain America figure. So I figured we would start with this one. Um, is it, oh, I've actually looked, been looking forward uh, to this one. I've always probably heard me say this before but i've always liked this costume even though i did not like the story that this was based on but i always liked the look i thought it was kind of a cool updated look for cap even though it didn't really last very long so we will get the If I end up opening everything, I have a lot of packaging, so I brought a garbage bag down here so things don't get too out of hand. All right, so Secret Empire Captain America with his really angry facial expression. You get, of course, his new, uh, the shield that he had, his new updated shield, which again, didn't last very long, but. Multiple pairs of, or, you know, extra pair of closed fists. Kind of wish we had gotten a, a extra head sculpt with this one, but there you go. Nice texturing on the outfit. So, typical shield construction with the little clip that you can put around his wrist or the peg so you can plug it into his back. I'm a little disappointed that the shield does not split. Um, so Hasbro, of course, did do a three and three quarter inch version of this cap back before the Marvel. You know, this is one of the last figures they did before the line ended. But actually did a better job with his shield on the smaller figure because it split in half. So you had the two clips and everything so it's a little disappointing they did not give us that same feature on this larger shield but otherwise i'd say this is a pretty solid figure and just to give you a comparison so i still say this cap is the best cap that hasbro has done and probably will ever do so this is the anniversary cap that they did. So 
that remains my favorite Captain America figure. Um, but this one, you know, I think that, again, they did a pretty solid job overall with it. So I don't know if any of you guys have uh, gotten this one yet. It started shipping from Walmart, I think, this week. Mine just arrived yesterday, so if you if you pre-ordered this one, you know, this was a Walmart exclusive. So if you pre-ordered this one um, and you haven't gotten it yet, you probably will be getting it very soon. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So let's uh, let's switch gears here a little bit. Go from Marvel Legends to GI Joe Classified. So I've got Quick Kick here. Actually, I have Before we do quick kick, do big boa. So, Rocky Bell was meant to be Rocky Balboa's arch nemesis, and then Ro Rocky got pulled from the G.I. Joe line, so we never got Rocky, a G.I. Joe Rocky figure, but we did still get the arch nemesis. Boxer, you get alternate boxing hands. Actually, come in two pieces. You get a set of dumbbells, ninety pounds each. I don't know. I expect him to curl something a little heavier than ninety, but not that I could do that. But. He's, I like how he's missing the a tooth. He's got punched in the mouth one too many times, I guess. A little bit of five o'clock shadow there. So I think they did a pretty good job with that. Pop off his regular hands. Let's give him his uh, Cobra boxing gloves. So now he's ready to punch it out with somebody. He's got the helmet, which is just an alternate head. I never had the original uh, Big Boa figure. It was not one that I ever got as a kid. All right, so even though we never got Rocky Balboa in uh, G.I. Joe, we have gotten Rocky Balboa figures from other companies. So I think this is, uh, yeah, this is the one that NECA did. I think, I think Jax had done some Rocky figures as well. I just want to make sure these were uh, NECA. But if you've got this NECA Rocky Balboa and you want uh, you want Big Boa to finally be able to go up against his arch nemesis, then uh, these two actually work pretty good with one another. So I think it would be cool if Hasbro was able to go back and actually get the likeness rights to do a Rocky classified figure, even though we never got it in the original line. I think it would be kind of cool if Hasbro could make that happen. Uh, especially since, you know, we've gotten now big Boa in the line as well. 
So let's see who is. some uh, additional folks have uh, joined us, I see. So Rashid, good to see you. The mass figure collector from the UK, good to see you. What is it? I guess you're ahead of us here, so it's like late night for you, isn't it? Mr. Martinez, Love and Cap, Shaggy. Uh, Joe, did I make the intro to you? I did not. Um, I, I, I hired somebody to uh, make them for me. So <laughs> the name has kind of slipped my mind, but here, let me. Uh... So uh, his company is X. Uh, XWE owner is what it goes by. So he does some of those. Uh, if you've seen the stop motion action figure, stop motion, a little like commercials that he does for big bad toy store. Um, he does those. So I reached out to him and asked him if he could put that together for me. I, I had like, I had kind of like thought about, expanding it like I, original like the idea was to kind of create a show environment with the videos and uh so like besides the audience i was gonna have uh i was gonna have a band like a, an action figure band put together stop motion and stuff and like cats up for that and stuff and i still may end up doing that at some point but i don't know but that was kind of the idea behind it my mouse keeps crapping out on me. Oh, there we go. Gnarly Charlie's guess. Uh, oh yeah, I got the I got the Techno Viper here too. Yeah, I got Airborne, uh, Quick Kick, Techno Viper, and uh, and Big Boa here. So I have all of those to open. What's up, Camp Crystal Lake? What's up? All right, so let's uh, let's move on to our next. Let's go with uh. Let's see, what do we got? All right, so let's uh, do a transformer next. So I don't know if you guys saw the new uh, trailer for uh, Transformer 1, the new animated movie uh, coming in September from Hasbro and Paramount. I thought... I will say they probably, in my opinion, overdid... We're doing the comedy a little bit too much overplaying that a little bit too much i feel like if they just take that back a little bit it would be probably a really good movie um i mean i'm not saying it won't be a good movie in fact even with the comedy i i i still felt like this is going to be better than that beast wars movie which i did not think was very good so um and I realize the movie's not, you know, it's, 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 I'm not going to say it's not made for me because I'm sure Hasbro and Paramount definitely want the adult Transformer fans to go in and see this movie, but it's also meant to try and appeal to younger audiences or be a movie that parents feel safe taking their kids to. So I get that, but I just feel like if they had just toned down the comedy a little bit, I don't want Salome jumping up here. Sorry. 
that it might be better, but I guess we'll have to see. But anyway, I've got my uh, new uh, G1 gears. And I guess they do it with these more recent, like smaller Autobots. You know, these are pretty close to MP quality. I mean, they're not, I mean, they're still not quite as good as an MP figure, but you know, size wise, gears here. This is an MP Bumblebee. And, you know, size wise, they're pretty good. Here's Ron. So. Puffer. So I, I, I put these with my MPs. And here's Wind Charger. Wind Charger is a little bit on the short side. Same thing with Cliff Jumper. I wish he and Wind Charger were just a little bit taller. But overall, a little wrapped up. Weapon accessories. I hate this tissue paper stuff. That's pretty easy. Because I always, the, like, stuff always seems to get stuck in there and you, like, end up. So he's got his gun. And he's got a chest plate. So, not a lot of detail underneath here. I've seen some people, like, paint this insides because you know in the cartoon there's a little more paint detail to this area as we just left it unpainted but still overall i'm not going to try and transform them but i definitely like this one A-Town says, uh, Transformers 1 is too inspired by Fortnite. Well, I'll take your word for that because I don't really follow Fortnite that much. But Fortnite, something probably deemed very popular with kids. So I'm guessing that is probably what they had in mind. Something along their line. Again, I mean... This is Hasbro's attempt to try and, you know, essentially capture a new generation of uh, Transformer fans. So whether they're successful or not, I don't know. But I'm sure they've seen the success of movies like Into the Spider-Verse and the latest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle animated movie. And, you know, hoping that, that uh, they can get some similar results at the box office. Abnugler, what's up? Uh, what did you think of Super 7 exclusive reveals? I don't get why they chose to do Ghost Groon and give him the wrong head knowing they have two... Cr uh, somebody was just telling me that, like, the that uh, because he's got two teeth, I think. I had, Honestly, I had not looked at the image that closely, so I hadn't even noticed it. I'm going to guess that it's possible that could change before actual release, maybe, maybe, or it was an oversight error. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why the Canadian retailer had images of San Diego Comic Con exclusives that, you know, Comic Con's still like three months away. So it was kind of weird that they popped up there. I mean, they're all repaints. I probably, for me personally, or not even repaints necessarily, like the Zartan. I don't know if that Zartan has color change ability like the regular release one, but it's got different accessories. The the clear I thought the coolest one was the clear translucent Dungeons and Dragons figure. I thought that was kind of a cool idea. Though I probably am not gonna collect that line just because I'm pretty content with the ones that Hasbro gave us for that, but I don't know. It was kind of weird.
Don't forget. To, yep, I did that. They announced Blackheart, Morrow, and Shuma Gorth yet, and the Ghost Rider comes out when? <laughs> no, uh, no, on the first part, Ghost Rider. I, I don't know when it's going to actually be released, but it's going to go up for pre-order on April 30th, so at the end of the month. I'm sure it'll be out by the summertime. That that Ghost Rider, that was like a, a really good. Uh, that was the best reveal earlier this week. Super Seven Repaint City. I mean, you know, sometimes companies can never win because, like, if they do a, a brand new figure that everybody wants is like a Comic Con exclusive, then everybody gets pissed because you know they they're not going to Comic Con and it's a pain in the ass to get. But then when they just do like a repaint of an exclusive like that, then it's like, oh man, it's just a repaint. It's <laughs> so I don't know. Companies often just can never seem to lose or win with that kind of thing. Ghost Rider can be ordered on the 30th. Who knows when it hits street? Yeah, like I said, I don't have an exact street. Summertime. I'm going to say, you know, don't ever expect a true exact release date on an action figure, but I'm going to say it should be out sometime this summer. And of course, it'll show it'll show up like probably in the UK before it shows up here in the United States. So then you've got to get specific on what region of the world are we talking about? Where we, you know, where because Things don't just get released all at the same time all across the all across the world. So they'll probably show up uh, first in the UK, something like that, and then. Uh, but I'm thinking here in the US, probably uh, July or August time frame. Super Seven falling off on all sides, man. I talked to the sculptures there, and he even gave me his my art, and even gave him my artwork of a head pack for teen and they didn't do it. <laughs> Gnarly Charlie Dan who, yeah, he, he, uh, he gets often, uh, stuff for before anyone else, just cause he lives in the damn UK. Which ones did I order? Uh, Marvel legends. Uh, I went on, I actually, I mean, only two of the things they've shown so far have gone up for pre-order. I actually pre-ordered both the Superior Spider-Man and the Astonishing X-Men Wolverine. I'm still on the fence on the Wolverine. I could end up maybe canceling that one. I don't know. Um, but I went on and pre-ordered both of those figures. I'm definitely getting Ghost Rider. Uh, no doubt about that. I don't know about the other things like the Luke Cage and the Iron Fist. That's kind of tempting, but I, I'm undecided at this point. Um, the Carol Danvers figure is not on my high priority list, though I've seen a lot of people, surprisingly, I've seen a lot of people like seem really excited for that one. So, and of course, that one's a Target store exclusive. And then, um, God, now, now I'm having a brain for it here. <laughs> the other, they're Hulkbuster, we haven't seen. Odin, we haven't seen. Um, so I feel like I'm, oh, Scar. Yes, thank you, Scar. Scar for me, I mean, I, the figure looks good. It's just for me, I'm not, it's like not a character I'm super excited for. So, that one I might end up passing on. But the figure itself does look good. I'm just, again, Scar is, just was never a favorite character of mine. Ghost Rider is a must. I agree with you. The Iron Fist is tempting. And see, at first I was like, uh, I've already got Luke Cage. But then I'm like, but I actually kind of like that just T-shirt and jeans look for him. And then, like, the added brass knuckles was just kind of a nice little extra touch. I'm less enthusiastic about Iron Fist. I've already got an Iron Fist. I mean, I know this one is an improved over the older ones that they've done, but I'm just not as big an Iron Fist fan. So I'm like, yeah, but I probably will end up getting that one. But right now, I won't say one. I won't commit 100%. I think that's supposed to go up next week for pre-order. Uh, and then, according to Dan Young, uh, finally that, that Spider-Man retro card back Carnage figure 
is supposed to go up for pre-order at Target next week as well. So I guess we're going to get two Marvel Legend pre-orders for next week. All right, let's move on to another opening. So we've done Marvel, we've done G.I. Joe, we've done Transformers. So... Let's, uh, we'll do a, a Jada Street Fighter figure next. So, so I, I have the Ryu, I've had the Ryu figure for a little while. I, I talked about that in a video, you know, several weeks ago. I don't know if you guys watched that, but I've had Ryu, but I didn't get any of the other, uh, Street Fighter figures. I was waiting for Dawson. Um, and yeah, I don't care if I mispronounced it to you so-called street fighter experts that's how i've always said it but i was waiting for him and uh but then i was like you know what i'm just gonna i was so impressed with the ryu figure that i was like you know what i'm just gonna go on and get these and then hopefully the other two and bison uh will come in I think I have it on pre-order at Big Bad Toy Store, so hopefully it'll come in stock there. I know like Target stores have been getting it, but I, I have not I have not seen a single one of these uh, Street Fighter figures at any physical store, including Target. My Target, I've yet to ever see these on shelves at my local Target. So I don't know if they're just not carrying them or if they're selling out. Uh, that quickly or what, but I've yet to see these, uh, any of these uh, Street Fighter figures on physical store shelves. So I'm not sure why this isn't coming out of the package. Ken here. Jada, I, you know, they just came, kind of came out of the blue with action figures. I mean, you know, they were known for doing, like, die-cast cars and, and stuff. And then all of a sudden, they were like, hey, we got these action figures. And, you know, they just, they've been, you know, they're not super-duper expensive, at least based on, you know, today's market prices. You know, they're $25 each, so they're fairly reasonably priced. And they're very well made. I mean, you know, you don't have to worry about these things breaking right out of the package. At least so far, my experience has been, you know, granted, I've only, <laughs> this is only my second figure I've opened. But but the Ryu figure was very well made. And this one seems to be, you know, pretty good, pretty sturdy. You know, the joints move well. And like I say, you don't have to worry about them snapping or anything like that. So, like with some other companies. So. Oh, uh, the but it is a little rubbery up here. I just popped that off. So he does come with an extra head sculpt. Yeah, so he's got the smiling Ken face. Kind of looks like He Man to me. To be honest. Got a kind of He Man look to him in the face, at least. But yeah, I, I I'm really impressed with these figures. Uh, did I not? I don't know why this thing is so hard to box. Hmm. I see that there should be a stand for this, I believe. But I'm not soon. Uh, I'll find it later. But yeah. I continue to be impressed with this line. You 
you have your uh, G.I. Joe versus your Street Fighter. Uh, it's hard to believe that Street Fighter was actually, they actually did Street Fighter G.I. Joe figures at one point. <laughs> Judge Dredd says, I only have Chun Li. My other uh, Street Fighters are Storm and Soda. So I've got. Oh, glad you actually brought that up. So I actually. So I pulled out some of my uh, Soda. I don't have. I have Ryu from Soda, or not Soda, but from Storm Collectibles, but. I pulled out some of my older Soda Street Fighter figures. So, Saiga here. And, it, you know, these uh, Soda figures are still pretty, you know, they hold up, you know, pretty well, even by today's standards. Um, most of them, anyway. Maybe not all of them, but these are really well made figures. So. And then I got, let's see who else. This dude. I don't even remember this guy's name. Uh, okay, one more. No, I guess those are the only two I brought over here. But yeah, the soda figures are really nice. And they actually go pretty good with the with the Jada figures. I think Jada would make great Resident Evil figures too. I'm sure. I mean, they seem to kind of go slow. Like I don't see them going all in on action figures. Like you know, they haven't gone gung wild. They do those uh, mascot like cereal mascot and potato chips like Chester Cheetah, which is kind of weird to me. I can't say I've ever sat there and gone, God, I want an action figure of, of the cereal mascot or potato chip mascot, but I'm sure there's a market somewhere for that. Um, and then they do the Mega Man figures, which I've never been that much into Mega Man, so I didn't get any of those, but, but I'm sure, you know, as time goes on, if these continue to sell well for them, that we could see them expand out and do other, uh, you know, maybe video games or, you know, who knows what else. Uh, one thing Soda had over Jada, they did the alpha characters and designs. Yeah, I mean, but you got to realize that back when those Soda figures came out, the action figure market was totally different. I mean... Soda had places like Tower Records and Suncoast and, and just a bunch of retail places to sell their figures, whereas you don't really have that anymore. So everything now is primarily online, which can make it more difficult sometimes, especially for a new action figure line. So the fact that Jada has kept their prices down pretty well, you know, pretty low, um, and giving us, you know, pretty good quality, even if they're kind of slow. I mean, you know, they're not just like cranking these out left and right, but I feel like, you know, they are doing a pretty good job with it. But yeah, Soda gave us like all different very, you know, they gave us all the different color variations and all that for all the different characters. And they went, they went pretty deep uh, back in the day. I mean, Soda, is probably I would consider them to be the most successful company with Street Fighter, especially U.S. based. Storm Collectibles is an overseas company, so they're a little bit different. But as far as U.S. based companies, Soda I think has definitely had the most success with Street Fighter. And Soda and Storm, I mean, comparing a Storm collectible figure with a Jada, I mean. The price difference between a Storm and a Jada figure is just so drastic that if the Storm collectible figure wasn't better, there'd be a huge problem. I mean, it just should be expected. And I'd, I personally don't think that they're that much better. I mean, I think 
where the storm figures kind of shine is you do get generally like more accessories and stuff, but, but I don't think the quality of this figure is, it, you know, compared to like the Ryu storm collectible figure I have, I don't think the quality is that, that terribly drastically different. Now, granted, again, I have not. Ryu is the only Storm figure that I have for their Street Fighter line. So I got their Sub Zero, their original Sub Zero and Scorpion figures too for Mortal Kombat. But, but I think Storm always does a good job with the accessories and like that mimic their powers and abilities, you know, from those games and stuff, not just Street Fighter, but like Mortal Kombat and all of them. I think Storm does a pretty good job with that. I only, Jerry says, I only got the big guys from Storm, which would scale right, but would be uh, getting the rest from Jada. Yeah, that's not a bad, yeah, that's not a bad plan of action. Storm moves so slow that I have zero faith any team will get, be completed. Yeah. Yeah, well, I definitely uh, was disappointed that they seem to have stalled out on their G-Force figures. I was hoping uh, they were going to do that whole team, and I don't think that's going to be the case. Mr. Cheeseburger says, I haven't found one. J yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I see pe other people finding them at stores, but I've yet to find them uh, at a single store physical store but then like you know my target is like one i honestly would got to say my target is probably the worst target in the entire country it just it just uh, it just really sucks <laughs> all right let's go back to another marvel legend so this one uh i finally got uh Last weekend, I think it was last weekend it arrived, but I've been waiting for this one for a while. And I've heard lots of good things about this new angel figure. You know, I got it. I'm not saying every, every figure that Hasbro is cranking out for Marvel Legends is, is a, is a winner, but I feel like here recently Hasbro has really been giving us a strong selection. I mean, I'm not sure that's tamped down the Hasbro sucks posts from, from people, but I feel like Marvel Legends has uh, picked up pace a little bit here in recent months because it really got to a point where I was not buying very much in the way of Marvel Legends anymore and they've kind of started to pull me back in so unlike Star Wars where like I just I I have little to no interest in buying any of the Star Wars stuff that they keep announcing I'm like yeah I think I'll just pass So I think they've done a pretty good job with this uh, head sculpt. And let's see. This one I was not as much of a fan of from images I've seen. Doesn't look quite as bad in person, but it's still not my uh, favorite head sculpt. So this is the one I think I will definitely be keeping on the figure. Uh, let's see, how have they done these wings? Oh, I see. I'll make sure I got the right.
Yeah, yeah they, Hasbro did a nice job with the wings here. I mean, just the sculpting detail with the individual feathers on each one. I mean, that's that's really nice. I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera. Yeah, you can, but just that texturing and that. I mean, that's not painted. That's sculpted. So, and it's on both sides. My biggest fear with this figure is just it being, like, often with winged characters. It's just being top-heavy and falling over really easy. But it actually stands pretty good. And could you imagine having to go around in life with these big giant wings on your back all the time? Like, you know, it's not something you could just take off. I mean, eventually they did get torn off, but but still, that's got to be a pain in the ass. Of course, I always liked how, like, he would somehow manage to tuck these in under his clothes or something so you wouldn't notice them. But, yeah. I really, I would love Hasbro to give us the original X-Factor team, you know, which of course was the original X-Men, but in their original X-Factor outfits, you know, we've gotten Cyclops before with the white and blue, but I would love to get like all of the original X-Men in their X-Factor outfits at some point. Jerry says, chicks dig his wings. It deserves a flight stand. Yeah, but that would have raised the price probably. But yeah, I agree. A flight stand would be nice. I, but the thing is, it doesn't bother me that much because I've got so many extra like flight stand figure stands in drawers around here that I'll find something for them. So to me, I mean, I agree it would be nice to, if they included it, but it's not like a deal breaker for me because I've got so many extras. Coco says deluxe uh, vintage collection Django arrives today. Hope I like. Hope you like it too, man. Like I said, I just I really have not been a, both vintage and black series have just not been uh, doing it for me very much. So I have not really bought a new Star Wars figure in some time. All right, well, what else do we want to do? Well. Showed him earlier, so let's bring him back. Our man, quick kick. So, this is probably from this newest batch of G.I. Joe classifieds. This is probably the one I was looking most forward to. I remember I always thought it was so funny in the in the cartoon how he was he wasn't even like I mean obviously he knew karate and stuff but he was like like his thing was he was a, a stunt guy for for TV and why he was up in the Arctic which is when he was first introduced in the cartoon with no shoes and no shirt on you know. And he, uh, in the cartoon, he kicked Storm Shadow's ass. In the comic book, he got his ass kicked by Storm Shadow. So it's kind of funny.
is a frozen fudgy candy bar. That that's the company was doing the the commercials for when he ran into G.I. Joe in the Pyramid of Darkness. And I feel like I feel like uh, they created him more for the cartoon because, like, I don't know why, but in the cartoon, they never really flushed out Snake Eyes and his like ninja stuff. So, like, you know, Storm Shadow first mean opponent in the cartoon was Spirit. And then I felt like, you know, they brought in quick kick. So really, so, so Storm Shadow had somebody to fight since they didn't really want to make Snake Eyes his arch nemesis in the, in the cartoon, I guess, because since Snake Eyes didn't talk, they didn't think it would be very interesting to have a silent character. I mean, Snake Eyes really did not, as much as, you know, Snake Eyes is in everything these days, if you really go back and watch the original cartoon, he really did not play that much of a critical role in the cartoon. I was going to say, it feels like his swords don't stay in there very well, but I guess they do. But they feel kind of loose. But they seem to stay in there good, so that's that's good. He's got the nunchucks. Uh, I don't see any place to. St oh wait, yeah. Uh, I always, one thing I always like about GI Joe is they always do a pretty good job with giving you places to store the weapons and stuff. Now, with some characters, that makes them a bit top-heavy, granted. But still, I just like that they... So, like, I can always keep the ex the weapons with the figure. I don't have to, like, stick them in a drawer and then they get lost or something. The handles on the nunchucks are kind of soft, so it's kind of hard to get pushed down. Two head sculpts. Don't really like this head sculpt that much, though. It's kind of a weird... Looks like he's puckering up for a kiss or something. <laughs> Maybe he's about to sketch a face on the moon or something. And give the throwing star effect, so that's nice. And then this frozen fudgy candy bar. So yeah, I think they did a pretty good job with this one overall. All right, let's see what we got. I'm not going to. I'm sure Hasbro could make a couple of X Men five packs first costumes and X Factor. It would be nice, but they don't seem to like when they do five packs. Almost always, it's like they give us like half the set, at least half the set as figures we've already gotten before. So I don't think they've ever done like a complete, like five brand new figures in a five pack before. All 
Jerry said, I can't believe CoverGirl and Falcon hasn't hit all his. <laughs> those are like, most people think those are the two figures with the worst face sculpts. So you kind of think that they would have. I don't have any Ollies near me, so I never get to go and partake in the, the extreme discounts. We're going to jump back to Transformers here. So this is one I've been waiting for for a long time. I got this one from Entertainment Earth because this was sold out already at Big Bad Toy Store and uh, Amazon. So I went and got it from Entertainment Earth, but they took forever to get it in stock. Always hate you gotta like dig through, make sure they haven't like hidden accessories someplace. Sometimes they like to do that. So now I just need swoop and I'll have all my uh, dino bots finally. That. I told you I hate this tissue paper because you never know if you've like gotten everything out of it. Alright, so let's cut this bad boy loose. Did they put enough of these little typing on? Unfortunately, I did not bring the other Dinobots over here. They're still over in the keys. And I'm not going to transform them. Try and transform them. Overall, he looks pretty good. I wish they could make like these gold parts a little more metal looking than plastic, but otherwise. I think they've done a pretty good job. Like I said, I'm waiting for Swoop now. And I went on... Like, I had waited to pre-order him, and so he sold out. He almost sold out everywhere. So I went on and pre-ordered Swoop uh, the day he went up. He says, they did a five-pack of the original X-Men. They looks yeah, that Toys R Us exclusive five-pack. Yeah, that was. And, and what sucked about that was that five-pack was supposed to be based on, like, young X-Men. And because it was based on that, like, X-Men from the alternate reality or whatever it was, they had come back or, like, time traveled or something. I forget what it was, but, like, it was younger versions of the original X-Men that had come to the present. And that's what that box set was supposed to be based on. But, of course, Hasbro just used their, you know, repainted their existing older looking X-Men figures. So it did not look that accurate. Um, I don't know what I, I, I actually kind of like that whole idea with that those X Men, and I like the like new outfits that they got. But I don't. I quit reading the comics, so I don't know whatever happened to those guys. 
Dejja says, the only Transformer I have is Armada Unicron and Optimus Primal. I used to have those. I had most of the Armada stuff when it originally came out, but I sold it. I'm mostly just a G1 guy, so I don't really delve into much other uh, incarnations of the Transformers. Okay, so that watch Pew and just follow the sequence of his transforming demo. Well, I gotta tell you, I don't transform my transformers very often, so I usually, I usually keep them in robot mode, and that's how I keep them on the shelf. But especially with like masterpieces, it's such a pain in the butt. I mean, they look great, but. I do miss, you know, from the original G1 Transformers, how simple it was to transform them. And and nowadays, they are much more complicated. <laughs> What's up, Everett? How you doing? Uh, retro cards, Snake Eyes, Classified Rare? Uh... I mean, I. you're talking about the Walmart one? Uh, I mean, you're probably not going to find it if you walk into your local Walmart, but I haven't looked and see what it, they go for. I don't know if, like, Hasbro Pulse has them still available or what. So I, I, I couldn't really tell you that. Or answer that, I should say. We're still getting sludge. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I saw sludge at Target. So yeah, that seem out of the, the out of the Studio Series Dinobot sludge seems to be the easiest one to get because I've seen him for months at, at like Target and maybe Walmart too. But uh, like I Grimlock, I hardly saw at all. And then, of course, Grimlock's going to get a reissue as part of that comic book line. But uh, Slag, I, I have not, I don't think I've seen Slag at, at physical stores, or if I did, it was like only once when it first came out. But yeah, Sledge. And Sledge, I'm pretty sure, got reissued. Like, I think they, they, they went back and had more produced of that. So, which is probably why that one is easier to get than the others. Jay says, uh, MP is not meant to be transformed back and forth constantly. Yeah. Like I said, I, I put them in robot modes and stick them on my shelf. And that's uh, usually the only, like, I think probably, I, I'm not sure if I've ever transformed my masterpiece more than once, you know, because oftentimes they come in their uh, vehicle type modes in the packaging and I prefer them in their robot modes on the shelf. So I'll have to transform them, you know, to get them into robot mode. But, and I tried doing some reviews of a few of man doing a transformer review is a pain in the ass. Mr. Cheeseburger wave three X-Men 97 is a must. Uh, okay. I, I'm not aware of, What's an X Men ninety seven wave three? But I'm sure it'll be cool figures. I mean, just this week's episode gave us a lot of uh, potential for new figures. So, Cable Forge, Sunspot, Jubilee, Beast, and Sinister. I'll take your word for it because I I've not seen anything uh, for that, but it sounds certainly doable though i'd be curious to know if forge is just going to be a reissue of the forge we've already gotten or because he hasn't really in the x-men 97 cartoon he hasn't really uh, been wearing that outfit like the, the x-men x-factor outfit he wore it in the original x-men cartoon but not x-men 97 but i doubt they're going to do forge in a t-shirt and cut off jeans so
Morph, we need Morph. I got the X-Men uh, VHS series Morph, so I'm pretty happy with that one, but I could definitely see them doing, like taking the, the white mask Morph from, was it Apocalypse? The Age of Apocalypse uh, version and sticking that on uh, the X-Men VHS figure and then releasing it without the cell shading. I can see them doing that. What's up, Quinn? Uh, yeah, everybody's doing good. Same with you. Loving X Men '97 TV series and figures. They're all selling very well. That is good to hear. Uh, yeah, I've I've loved the cartoon. Um, cartoon has surpassed my every expectation and then some. I really, you know, I didn't think it was going to suck like a lot of people were you know thinking it was going to suck you know i didn't think it was going to be woke and all that bullshit but i i was not expecting to like it better than the original x-men cartoon and i think they really have surpassed it uh the animation is just so much better than the original series it's 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 crazy and uh I'm just noticing a quick kick has numbers on the bottom of his foot. That's kind of fun. Uh, but, um, but yeah, animation has been uh, fantastic. And like this week's episode and the episode with Mojo, um, probably my least favorite, but they weren't bad in any way. Um, so. Yeah, fantastic series. I so much hope that A, we see the Avengers, Captain America, maybe the Avengers in this season before all is said and done. We got that little teaser in the in the promo clip for Captain America Shield. So I'm hopeful that you know we get maybe the Avengers. And then from there, I hope that they really plan on expanding out. If they do not expand out and do more animated Marvel 97 series, Spider-Man, Avengers, you know, if they do not expand out and do more, they're crazy. Um, I mean, I feel like they could just take Disney, like I was talking to somebody about this. I was like, they should just take Disney Plus, get rid of all the live action Marvel and Star Wars shows. And just to make it like a kind of cartoon network for Star Wars and Marvel. Because, like, I feel like the cartoons are so much better than the live action TV shows. I mean, Star Wars, we've had a, a few, like Mandalorian and stuff, we've had a few decent ones. But still, overall, like the Clone Wars and Bad Batch and, and Rebels and, and, you know, the Star Wars animated series stuff has been so good that I feel like they should just keep doing that. And then same thing with Marvel is like, you know, start giving us a MCU universe type build out for, you know, based on the characters from the nineties for X-Men and event, you know, for Avengers and, and so on and so forth. So I am hoping, and I keep hearing like these rumors, but I feel like those rumors are based more on just common sense like yeah this sounds like something that they're going to do so i'm just going to start a rumor and say hey, this is going to happen but but um yeah i i really hope that they do that exceeding your expectations yes yes very much so Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Every, it needs to be, they need to all be part of the same universe. So just like they did with the movies where they created a, a universe for all these characters, they need to do the same thing with the cartoon, only, you know, stemming out from the X-Men. So, you know, I don't want just an Avengers cartoon. I want an Avengers 97 cartoon. I don't want a Spider-Man cartoon. I want a Spider-Man 97 cartoon. Um so that they're all part of that same universe so they can have crossovers at times um and and things like that so that's what i want to see them do with all of these characters and like i say if they don't 
I feel like that will be a huge miss opportunity. After I said, good idea. I need a channel with nothing but superhero cartoons with DC. I don't think you'll ever see a, a channel, not in this streaming age, where you've got both DC and Marvel. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, because I, I just like the live action TV shows for both Marvel and Star Wars. I mean, like I said, Star Wars has had some... You know, the Star Wars live action TV shows have been better than the Marvel ones. I really have not been super excited for any of the live action Marvel shows that have aired on Disney Plus. I mean, they're watchable, but I've like had no desire to ever go back and rewatch any of those shows. Um, I'm hoping the Daredevil series is going to be decent, but even that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little skeptical. So. You know, I feel like the cartoons is where, the, uh, when it comes to TV and streaming, is is where the action's at. And like another great example of a great like superhero cartoon, like I don't know if you guys watch the Invincible cartoon on Amazon Prime, but I, I love that. I've never read the comics, so for me, it's all new. I know, especially like the first season was almost a direct adaptation of the comics. So I've seen some people who've read the comics say it was kind of boring because you knew exactly what was going to happen. That wasn't much true for me because I'd never read the comics. So, but I think that's a great series. Um, you know, the Invincible cartoon on Amazon Prime. I think that's a a fantastic series. Just, I like old cartoons better than. The ones they do now. I, I, in general, do too. Jamarna says, uh, comics are so good. Now, I, I, I agree. Like, I, I tend to gravitate to older cartoons. But, you know, again, X-Men 97, and that's really why I wasn't expecting to like think X-Men 97 was going to be better than the original. But it is. And, you know, Invincible, again, uh, fantastic cartoon. Do they sometimes go a little over the top with like the bloody gore stuff? Yeah, I mean, I I know that's in keeping from the comics as well, but they probably could tone that down a little bit if they wanted to, if they wanted to make it a little more appealing to younger audiences. But still, that's a really good cartoon. I not every cart yeah the cartoons, but the other thing to keep in mind, like Invincible, obviously that's made for adults. That's not made for kids in any way. Um, it's when they start trying to make for the kids like what appeals to kids today doesn't appeal to me so when they try and make a cartoon that's going to appeal to younger kids nine times out of ten it's i don't find it that appealing so like you know the transformer one animated movie that's obviously has kids very much in mind so i may not end up really enjoying that cartoon i don't fault them for trying to bring in newer, younger audiences, because if you want the brand to survive, you know, you've got to be able to do that. But, but, uh, you know, just like what I liked as a kid, my parents, you know, they didn't like what I liked when I was a kid. You know, every generation has, you know, different likes and things. And like, I recently had my niece come stay with us. She's a teenager and she stayed with us. And I mean, you know, the things that appeal to her are so far out of anything that would ever have appealed to me or, you know, kids of when I was that age. And it's, I think that's just how it goes. So, you know, trying to come up with something that's going to appeal to younger folks and like people my age, I feel like in this is almost a near impossible task, but X-Men 90 and like X-Men 97. Well, I love it. I don't know how appealing it's going. It would be for younger kids, like, like kids who were the age when I first watched X-Men, the original X-Men cartoon, those kids today, I don't know if they actually would like this cartoon or not. They might, I don't know, but, but I feel like this, that cartoon is 100% made for me, not for younger kids. And
They run reruns of Looney Tunes and Flintstones on local TV where I live. I have not watched uh, Looney Tunes or Flintstones in ages, but... Bring back Flintstones. When they dumb down franchises to appeal to kids, it's the worst. Look what happened to RoboCop, Rambo, Ghostbusters. They made tunes from those movies. Well, are you saying those cartoons sucked? Or I mean, Ghostbusters, the cart... Well, first of all, Ghostbusters was a kid's movie, whether you remember it as, as such or not. That was really more of a kid's movie. I mean, even though... Because, like, I always feel like if you wanted the adult version of Ghostbusters, you should go watch the movie Stripes, which, you know, it's it's about the same actors, but they're in the military. But essentially, it's the same kind of formula as Ghostbusters, only Ghostbusters is toned down, doesn't have, like, nudity and things like that, like Stripes has. So Ghostbusters was definitely made for kids. But, like, Rambo, like, when they made the Rambo cartoon series i mean obviously and i never really watched that so i, I can't really speak to that but I, I you know if you were like a huge fan of the rambo movies i'm not sure how well that cartoon came off but but again you got to remember what we watched as kids our parents probably looked at and said man this is stupid as you know this is really dumb and even when you go back and you watch, like, I still love, like, G.I. Joe, the G.I. Joe cartoon, but I've got to admit that when I go back and watch episodes, there are definitely things that come off like, oh, man, that was, like, really corny. I can't believe it. <laughs> I like that. Charlie Brown. I, I got, I don't watch, like, I, I'll go back and watch Charlie Brown specials. Like, uh, I always watch every, every year at Halloween, I watch, uh, the great pumpkin episode. And then at Christmas, I watch you know, the Christmas special. Um, but I don't like go back and usually watch older, just regular episodes of, of the peanuts. Scooby-Doo remake is good. I was, I, they have that Thelma series. I, which I've never watched. Is that what you mean by Scooby-Doo remake? Is Scooby-Doo even in that? I, I don't know. I heard a lot of people say that Thelma series kind of sucked, but again, I've never watched it for myself. So, Bring back Wolverine and the X-Men Spectacular Spider-Man and Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Everett says. Well, again, I would, you know, I want all those characters to get new shows, but I want it to be based on the X-Men 97 universe. I don't want it to be like its own thing. Steve. <laughs> yeah, but that was that was the most you're right, but that was the most that was the most hardcore thing about the original Ghostbusters thing and probably most kids didn't even realize what was going on there. But uh but like go back and watch most most movies that Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and those actors did, you know, back in the 80s and Ghostbusters is very much a toned down uh movie for those guys. Of course, I did. I never realized that originally Eddie Murphy was going to be in that was supposed to be in Ghostbusters, but then he had a conflict, I think, with Beverly Hills Cop. But I, I, like, I like Winston. Um, but I, I often wonder, you know, what Ghostbusters would have been like with Eddie Murphy in it. Jay says, "I like how Cyclops is the big X Men leader in the new series." Yeah, Cyclops is. I mean, that's another good thing that I think they've done here is like, it's not like Wolverine and the X-Men. It's, it's, it is truly about the X-Men. And so everybody gets to shine. In fact, Wolverine so far, at least has kind of taken a back seat. Uh, so I'm actually very glad that they didn't make this series about Wolverine, which they often do with X-Men stuff these days. So even towards the end of the original X-Men series, it got very Wolverine centric. So um, yeah, I think they've done a good job with kind of 
giving the other characters the limelight here, including Cyclops. Star Wars is dead. Marvel is near death. What's left for us to watch? <laughs> I don't know. I still, I mean, I've got hope for some of the Marvel stuff. Uh, Deadpool, I think, will be good if we're talking movies. Star Wars, I just like, uh, I don't know. I'm tired of them jumping all over the place with Star Wars. Like, like the new series, like going back so far in the past. I don't, let's, let's finish fleshing out this time period between Return of the Jedi and, and, uh, Force Awakens. Let's not jump back into the past again. I mean, eventually, maybe once you've kind of flushed everything out in that, period but i just that's one of the things that irritates the most about star wars i don't mind us like bad batch you know kind of jumping back between uh you know episode three and episode four i don't mind that as much but i just i feel like pick a time period and stick with it and let's finish you know telling those stories before we jump back like a hundred years or whatever it is to start a whole completely different thing but I, I still think there's, you know, decent amount of stuff for us to watch. In fact, you know, right now, you know, I think a lot of stuff gets made for us more so than the kids even. I always thought Star Wars nostalgia would never die. Well, it's it's definitely maybe on life support, but I don't think it's dead. And I definitely think it can see a resurgence. But again, are kids today really ever going to be into Star Wars? I mean, Star Wars definitely has managed to bring in multiple, you know, multi-generations of folks. So over the years, but, you know, it's hard to believe that people who, grew up watching the original trilogy or not the original trilogy, but the, the prequels are now, you know, getting pretty old. You know, I was an adult when those came out. So it, it's kind of weird to think back that those are now kind of considered old, really old movies. But, you know, I don't think the sequels did a great job of capturing uh, new audiences and they pissed off a lot of the old audience as well. So but I do, you know, I think they could definitely uh, still recover from that. Ernie Hudson, I prefer him as as Winston. Just subtle jokes, not over the top. I, yeah, like I say, I like Winston. Um, you know, Ernie Hudson does a good job. I've not seen the new Ghostbuster movie. I've heard mixed things about it. So I, I don't know where that one really falls in, in, in things. But, but uh I, I just, to me, especially back then, it just, I, I feel like Ghostbusters would have turned out very differently if they had actually put Eddie Murphy in that movie. And also, um, I didn't know this until recently. I was watching a, a interview with Dan Aykroyd. I think it was on the Howard Stern show, and he was talking about how um, originally the, the, um, character that Bill Murray plays was actually created for John Belushi, who of course passed away um, before they could actually, you know, start filming the movie and stuff. But that role was actually created for John Belushi, not Bill Murray. So that would have been kind of interesting to see how that would have turned out as well. Prophet 924 says, my 15-year-old loves Star Wars. But what version of Star Wars do they love? The original trilogy, the, the prequels, the sequels, the cartoons. They love it all. You know, what, what, or what version of Star Wars do they like? All right, well, let's open one more thing tonight. I'm not, we're not going to, I'm not going to get all this stuff open, but let's 
Like I have I have a number of the X Men ninety seven stuff, but I feel like I'm gonna hold off opening these. We got Cyclops. This one was harder to get. I'm kind of pissed that I missed getting Wolverine, and now he goes for like I'm not paying fifty bucks for him on the secondary market. I figure Hasbro will re-release him at some point. All right, well, we're going to go with our final open of the day. So this is another one. Wolverine Sabretooth 2-pack. Now, I got this for Sabretooth. I, I really could care less about Cowboy Logan, but... I've heard pretty good things about the Sabretooth figure. Kind of funny they gave us two different Wolverine head sculpts, one with a black hat and one with a brown hat. Not sure why they felt we needed two. I know you're gonna take the Wolverine figure off right now because I don't really care. But this is what I got this set for. It seemed to be pretty good overall. It'd be a little rubbery, but nothing horrible. I didn't grab my older saber tooth. But he's right over here, so. so I believe this is the the one they did. Most recently, since you know, before this one, I have. This, I don't think this is the. It's bad. You lose track. But yeah, you can see just how much bigger this new one is. Face sculpt's better too on this new one. I was a little worried he might be top heavy because of this mean, but it seems to stand pretty good. I don't have a Wolverine handy, but so yeah, I don't. I think I did a pretty good job with this. They said the elbow joints feel a little rubbery, but that's really. 
He does not. He cannot do his head back at all. So you can't look like if you wanted him in like a leaping pose. You can't get him looking forward that great. But otherwise, that's because the mean. So yeah. Uh, thank you, my friend, for the f $5 super chat. I'm glad you guys... Uh, I was like, you know what? I got all this stuff. I could sit here and just open it by myself. But I was like, you know what? Let's just open it on live stream. Like I said, I, I have not opened everything. I still have more GI... Uh, I pretty much got more everything. I was going to open this one, but I, I'll hold off. I got this one. But, yeah, I appreciate you guys coming in here and just watching me open toys. Oh, you try to got to open, oh, you got to open your sab saber tooth, I'm assuming. Judge Dredd. Yeah, it's probably a good bet. I would not be surprised if we don't end up. Probably not for, not like this year or anything, but like in a year or two, I could see definitely, I figure, getting a, a re-release. I mean, I figure like X-Men 97 figures are going to become a yearly thing. So, especially as long as the cartoon keeps going and as popular as the cartoon seems to be doing, I, I don't expect the cartoon to get canceled anytime soon. So I feel like there is going to be plenty of X-Men figures coming uh, in, year, in the years to come. So that's why I say, like, I'm kind of bummed I missed out on the X-Men 97 Wolverine figure. But I, I just feel like the chances are too great that Hasbro will either reissue that exact same figure or they'll do a similar one down the road. But it's just... Yeah, so I'm not going to pay secondary market prices. You know, like I said, last time I looked, it was go they were going for like 50 bucks. So just, and I have, you know, I have Tiger Stripe Wolverines already. So that's why I didn't get it originally. But none of my family wanted to watch me open figures. So I have to pet dogs and cats. <laughs> well, I can't open stuff with my cat because she'll steal everything. She'll steal all the excess. I had to throw her off the table here tonight. She's back there sleeping now, but can't open stuff with my cat around because she'll steal all the accessories. I open all too cool not to play with. I, I, I generally open, but I don't like to open something if I don't have a space for it. So a lot of the times I, I end up getting behind on opening stuff is because I have to, you know, it's like I haven't had time to sit down and figure out where I'm going to put it. So I don't like opening something if I don't have a space to then put it at because I don't want it just sitting around or what have you. So that's generally what happens is like things, to, especially when a lot of things come out near the same time. So like, I'm like, okay, well, I'll figure out where to put that tomorrow. And then like tomorrow comes and I still haven't figured it out. And then something else arrives and then it's like, okay, well, where am I going to put that? And so that's usually, you know, like all the stuff I just opened. Now I got to figure out where I'm going to put it. But I have pretty good idea for most, most of the stuff, but, but that, you know, I, I generally open most of my stuff, but when it doesn't get opened, it's because I haven't found a pl good place to put it. And so then I just generally leave it in the package because then I won't lose like the accessories or whatever um, until I finally get around to opening it. Here it says, sell. why would I sell my arcades? Gnarly says, I do the same thing when it comes to opening my... <laughs> yeah. Space is... You know, money sometimes, but for me, it is more space that limit, like, I'll, I generally will base my decision on buying something based on whether I think I can find space for it or not. 
because I, I don't see the point in buying something that I can't put out and enjoy it if it's just going to go in a bin or a corner or whatever you know what's the point so uh space to me is is the number one uh thing that generally guides what i end up buying and what i don't buy and then what i end up opening and what i don't end up opening the judge says before i buy anything i have to figure out where yep yep All right, well, it's 8.30, so I think we're going to call it a wrap tonight. But again, thank you all for coming in here and uh, watching me. And it's always nice to chat with you guys. Um, I will be back tomorrow with a news video, so uh, hopefully we'll check that out. Um, and until next time, guys, you know, be safe out there, and I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, please think about hitting that subscribe button. Also, hit the bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. For all the latest action figure news, be sure to head over to ToyNewsEye.com, MarvelousNews.com, JediInsider.com, and TFormers.com. And remember, action figures are great!